In this video tutorial, I'm excited to be able to show the new Google Earth. And this Google Earth is an online Google Earth. For years, Google has given us the ability to download Google Earth, install it on our computers, and be able to use it. There's even a pro version of it that you can download and use. And if you're interested in learning the traditional Google Earth, that's a downloadable, installable Google Earth, please check out my other videos on Google Earth. But this Google Earth that I'm showing you now, this is different. This is an online only version of Google Earth and it's beautiful, it works well. I'm very excited about it. The address for this is google.com forward slash earth. And it is limited right now to just Google Chrome browsers. So if you want to use this online version of Google Earth, you really need to download Google Chrome and use it. I believe it will expand eventually and be usable in Safari and in Edge and other browsers. But for now, you've got to have Google Chrome. When you get to google.com slash earth, you'll notice that you're welcomed with these beautiful views of the earth, but the main thing you're gonna wanna do is click here where it says launch Google Earth. And when you do that, it's gonna load up in the browser and it's going to take you to a beautiful view of the earth. You can see sometimes it takes a little while for it to load, but this is welcoming me now to Google Earth. You can see down here at the bottom, as it welcomes me, it says there's five things to try, and you can click through these. Now, I'll show those features in this tutorial, but you can also watch them there. I'm just gonna go ahead and click skip, and it's taken me into the actual Google Earth program. First, let's take a look at the basic navigation controls, and these are quite similar to the old Google Earth. If you're used to the downloadable Google Earth, you'll feel pretty much at home. For example, you can still scroll in pretty much the same ways as you always could in Google Earth. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse and scrolling it up, scrolling it down, and you can see the results. You can also double click on anything in Google Earth and it will zoom in on that exact spot. We also have down here in the lower right, we have some controls for zooming in and zooming out with the plus sign and the minus sign. I rarely use those, preferring to just use the scroll wheel or double clicking. And just like in the older version of Google Earth, you can pan or move the view up, down, left, right, just by clicking and holding the mouse button and moving the mouse. Now there is one little known trick that I've discovered about this new Google Earth. Let's say you're looking at a view of the Earth and you just click and drag. It's going to basically pan left, right, up, down. You're gonna be able to move around and see it that way. But watch what happens if you double click. If you double click and then continue to hold the click and then drag the mouse button, look what it does. It's tilting the view. It's basically giving you a 3D view of whatever it is that you were looking at. And then at that point, if you release the mouse button and then click again just a single time, now you're panning but in 3D mode. Okay, so again, I can double click and then drag to get into or out of 3D mode. All right, so the idea with this new Google Earth is that you would use those tools together with this search here in the upper left. So let's say I'm interested in learning more about Toronto, Canada. I do my search and it flies me to Toronto, takes me into a good view of, of Toronto. And then at that point, I can just use those navigation controls that I've already showed to you of zooming in, possibly double clicking and then dragging to get a 3D view and clicking and dragging to pan and look around. Now this search can search not only for countries like Canada, cities like Toronto, it can also handle states, whether they be states from the US or from Mexico or other countries. Just type in a state and it should fly you to that state. It can also handle landmarks. So for example, I could type in Space Needle, do a search, and it should be able to find the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington. Okay, let's move now to the lower right corner of the screen. And I've already shown you a little bit of this, but in this version of Google Earth, the online version, the controls that used to be mostly in the upper right corner are now in the lower right corner and they're changed. There's some differences here. So let's look at each in turn. The first tool I would focus on is this mini globe. And to help you see that globe a little better, I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna move over the ocean so that you can see the globe uh, just a little bit better. So this mini globe is just that. It's a mini globe of the world. And you can see as I move around the world, it's affecting the mini globe, okay? And so what I should be able to do at any time in Google Earth is I should be able to glance at this little globe and I should be able to see, okay, I'm looking at the western coast of North America. 
Okay, so it helps me to orient myself a lot better than just guessing or moving the earth around that way. I can just glance down at the mini globe. Now, not only does it do that, but it also, as you can see here, outlines the view that you're currently looking at. So I'm looking at this part that's in red. Okay, that's the scope of what I'm seeing here. So that's pretty useful, I think. As I zoom out, it just shows the whole globe, but as I zoom in, it pinpoints, okay, that's exactly what you're looking at, and this portion here that's outlined in red, that's what I'm looking at now. Now there's another thing that this globe does, and it's kind of interesting. I'm not totally sure why it's set up this way, but what it is, is you can use this globe to actually navigate from place to place. So for example, let's say I'm interested in Jacob Lake here, and I'm looking at that, but then I decide, you know, I'd like to explore South America. What I can do is I can just click on the globe in the lower right, and then drag, and you can see it produces an arrow and then wherever the end of that arrow is, that's where I will be taken next when I release the mouse. Now you'll notice my mouse started out on the globe, but then in order to get the arrow to where I wanted it to be, I've moved my mouse off the globe and onto the main window itself. That's okay, that doesn't really matter. As long as you start out on this mini globe, you can drag it away. And then just release, and it will fly me, in this case, to the place that I pointed the arrow to. Okay, so it's a way to fly from one place to another, basically. All right, let's look at these other tools because they're very important. The next one is the compass. And the compass is useful in a couple of ways, but to really use it, what you have to do is double click on it. So I double clicked on it, now it's the front and center tool instead of the mini globe being that tool. And as you can hopefully see with this tool, we have around the compass, we have these little handles. And this one at the top is red, that's north. But look, I can click on that handle and make north be off to the right. Or I can make it pointing to the left, or however I want to orient the view. So that's mainly what the compass is for. Now at any time, if you want to get back to north is up, you just click on the center of the compass and it should reorient back to north being up. So hopefully that's useful to you. All right, so let's move on now to the 3D button. This is just a toggle. It toggles between 3D view, which is this, and 2D view. And you can see with 3D view, it kind of starts drifting a little bit uh, so that you get a little more sense of the grandeur of the earth. It's kind of a nice, I think, view of the area that you're looking at. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of 3D view and back to 2D. Next, we have one of the favorite tools from the old Google Earth, which is Street View. It's this gentleman here, and to use Street View, all you do is click and hold on that gentleman and then drag him onto the map. And anywhere that you see these blue lines, you should be able to drop that gentleman and you will zoom in to a street view of that location. So now in street view, I can click and drag and look around and get actual photos of this part of Peru, I believe. And uh, some of these are just amazing. It's a great, wonderful way to learn about the world and places that maybe you've never been, but that you're interested in learning about. Now, as you can see, it's almost like being in a 3D world or a video game, and it's blinking a little bit right now, but basically I can just click on these arrows that appear to navigate down this bridge, to navigate down the street, you can also look up at the sky, you can look down at the ground just by clicking and dragging and uh, looking around. So really a wonderful tool. To get out of Street View, you can simply click the Street View button again. You can also click this X in the upper left. The final tool that we have here is a very simple tool that, to be honest, I rarely use, but it just says fly to your location. When you click that button, if your computer is sharing its location with Google, then it will fly you to where you are currently in the world. So like I say, I, I don't see much use for that, but it is kind of fun, I guess, from time to time to click that. You have to allow your location to be known by Google Earth, and once you do that, it will start flying you to your current location. Okay, so that's something else to try if you're interested in that or see a use for it. All right, so I think that's a pretty complete tutorial on how to use these new Google Earth tools. Now I have just clicked on the globe a single click and it brought me back out to a view from space of the beautiful Earth. All right, so now that we know how to navigate in Google Earth and how to use these tools to help with the navigation, let's look here at the left at some amazing features that Google has put together.
I've already shown you the search option. Underneath that, we have something called Voyager, which is great. What this does is these are highlights that Google has put together and that they're sharing with us. Highlights uh, about the world and the amazing things in the world. So here's some editor's picks. And let's say I'm interested in this one, Backpackers Paradise. I can just click on it. It takes me to a welcome page. I click Start Exploring and it takes me to the first backpacking place that they would like to highlight. You can see there's a place mark there. And here on the right, I get some additional content about that place. I get the name, I get a photo, and I can click on that photo to have it get bigger. I can X out of it again. I can read about it. And this here, this paper airplane, all it does is it zooms you in to that point. So if you get lost, if you get away from it, you can just click that paper airplane and it will fly you back in to the location. All right, now I can click next and go to the second backpacking paradise. And so this Voyager is a way for us to learn about the world, to learn about amazing places. Now these are just the editor's picks. There's also travel ones, there's nature, there's culture and history. And my guess is that these will expand and they will change. And as time goes on, there will be different highlights that are spotlighted by Google. I hope you'll check these out. They're really fun and amazing to learn from. Okay, another tool that Google has put into Google Earth that is pretty new is I'm Feeling Lucky. Now this is similar to the I'm Feeling Lucky tool that you'll find at google.com. And what that does, you just click it and it takes you randomly to a website that you might enjoy. Kind of a strange way to explore the web, but it's been there for a while in Google. Well, now it's available in Google Earth. So if I don't really know where to start as I'm trying to learn about the world, I can just click I'm feeling lucky. It'll fly me to a random place that's special in some way, and I can learn about that place. And as you can see here, again, I have some more information about the place. I've got a picture. I've got the paper airplane to zoom in on the location. If you don't need all of that, you can click this little up arrow and it will hide some of that information. If you want the information back, you just click on it again. Notice when you hide it, it does give the latitude and longitude. It also gives the latitude and longitude down here so that you can find the exact location of anything that's in Google Earth just by using those pieces of information. Okay, I'm gonna click it to expand it. You'll notice that at the bottom of this informational window here, it has people also explore. So people maybe that are interested in this place might also be interested in this museum. Okay, they might also be interested in this museum. And so it's a way to kind of expand your interests and learn more about this region and these landmarks. There's one other tool here that's pretty fun and useful and that is bookmarks. If I find something I would like to keep and be able to find again easily, I can just click this bookmarks button. And this is very much like place marks. If you're familiar with the old Google Earth, it's very similar to that. So I click on it and I can click save. And it may ask for your permission to store files on your device. I'm gonna say allow. And now it'll let me save bookmarks. So if I ever want to go back to Brandywine Creek, I can just go to my bookmarks, open them up, click on Brandywine Creek, and it will fly me there. Now, in addition to just using I'm feeling lucky to find bookmarks and Adam, you of course could also do a search. I could fly to Australia and I could say, okay, I want to save that information. I want to save this place mark or this bookmark and I can just click that and it's added to my places. If you change your mind about some of these, you can click on them and you can see you can delete, you can rename, you can export as a KMZ file. Some of you know what that is, I'm sure, or as a KML file. So there's some pretty good options there. Real quick though, I do wanna elaborate on KMZ and KML files. Those are files that people have been creating for years using the old Google Earth. And basically you can create a Google Earth tour and some other content. If you're interested in making those yourself, please watch one of my other videos on how to make Google Earth tours. But anyway, once you've made those things, you can export them as a KMZ or a KML file and you can easily share those with other people. So if you already have KML or KMZ files, look what you can do. You can just go here into the settings. That's what these are here in the upper left, the settings. And go down, choose settings again, and you can enable KML file import. Now, as it says, it's experimental, but you can turn that on, save it. And so now I should be able to import KML files. All right, and the way I would do that is by opening the bookmarks panel here, and then now I have that option to import KML file. So some pretty great options. I also have some wonderful options for sharing. So basically I can get a link to any location in the world. 
I can just zoom in on whatever it is I want to share with someone, get the view that I want to share, make it look the way I want it to look, you know, 3D or not 3D. And then I just click here on the sharing options and I can get a link to that exact location and that exact view. So I can just copy it, send it to someone. You can also share it through Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook. So those are some pretty great options. You can see the link when it's clicked, it takes you exactly to the view that you have set up. There are a few other settings that you should probably be aware of. When you click on settings, it gives you the ability to sign into your account so that it'll be able to save your places, your bookmarks, and remember them from computer to computer. There's also some links to some of the other tools. And then there's map style, which is important. When you click on that, you can get a view that's just clean, no borders, no labels, no places or roads, or you can just use the default exploration view, and that's where you do get the labels and the roads and things like that. You can also choose everything. This will load up all sorts of bonus content, extra content into the map, and it can be great, but it can also be overwhelming and distracting. And then finally, there is a custom option where you can decide if you want clouds to be included, borders and labels, and each of these expands out and there's all sorts of options that you can choose. So play with the custom view. I usually just use it in exploration mode. And then finally, we do have some settings here where you can change the units of measurement, change it from meters to feet. You can also change the animation speed of how fast it flies. Lots of different options here. So I'm really excited about this new online Google Earth. I've enjoyed the traditional Google Earth for years and years. I love it, but it's nice to have an online version and I think it looks beautiful and it's very promising. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you'll consider connecting with me on some of my social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for a new video from me at least every Monday.